Good evening. Since I saw you last, I've acquired a criminal record. Assault with a deadly pepper. Now, Philistines among you might think I'm making a pun about Assault with a Deadly Pepper, the second R&B album from the pop duo Salt and Pepper being criminally bad. But the Enlightened will know that can't possibly be the case because Assault with a Deadly Pepper is one of the great R&B albums of the late 80s. No, I accidentally squirted someone with pepper spray, which is illegal to possess under the 1968 Firearms Act. I'm tempted to extend this frankly tortuous Salt and Pepper-based wordplay, but I don't want to push it. Tonight's teams are on my right. Tim Robinson, a keen traveller who caused a tailback in the Dartford Tunnel when he ran into the back of a Saab. Rob Butlin, a marathon runner who's travelled through all 270 London tube stations in 18 hours while dressed as Father Christmas. And their captain, Terry Pret, a former bookmaker who's been assembling a stand for his television since early 2003. United by their interest in space travel, they are the Apollos. Terry, what price do you make the Apollos in this heat? Six, six to four. Very nice. You know the old saying, it's always six to four. What do you think is a weak area of knowledge for you? Um, anything to do with buzzers. OK. <laughs> well, let's see how that goes. In this match, you will be playing on my left. Harry Kanagaratnam, a keen amateur musician who was stung by a scorpion, targeted by sniper rifles and contracted dysentery on a holiday to Sri Lanka. James True, a property solicitor who once had to tell Lennox Lewis that cranberry juice wasn't on the menu. And their captain, Lucy Harry, a law graduate who spent a morning in China shoveling panda feces. All big animal lovers they are, the wildlifers. Lucy, you had one of my favourite questions in your heat, the Roman Emperor's question. What was that question? <laughs> no idea. Can't Happy remember. memories for you. Isn't one of your team a classicist? Yes, yeah, that's, that's James. Me. Do you remember Actually, the James Emperor's question, James? Yeah, I do, because I think it was about the only one I got right. <laughs> you were adding Ian to make four emperors. I was very pleased with that. Well, good luck this evening. Your tricksy opponents, the Apollos, have won the toss but thrown you in first. So please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Could we have the lion, please? Yes, you could. What is the connection between these picture clues? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Uh, what's his name, James Earl? Is that right? Possibly. Do another? Uh, yeah, yeah, next, please. Nat King Cole. Are they all three namers, maybe? Possibly. Nobody three names, possibly. Should we take the last? Yeah, next, please. Such, yeah, such a brown cat. All named by three names. Is there a, is there a link? Uh, and then, so, has it got to be... Uh, it's got to be different. Do you think it's... Like, there's Earl Baron. Oh, God, yes. There you go. Two seconds. <laughs> We think they've all got three names and are also linked by the ti having titles in the names like Baron and Earl. Exactly so. A common term for that would be aristocratic names. <laughs> Who did you recognise? Um, Sasha Baron Cohen. Mm -hmm. And who else? James uh, Earl James Jones. James Earl Jones. That is James Earl Jones at clue two. Nat King Cole. Oh, yeah, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. And we didn't and know the first one. The first one is the actor and singer-songwriter Bonnie Prince Billy. Oh. So all nobility in their names. Well done. Apollos, what would you like? Water, please. Water. What is the connection between these watery clues? Here's the first. Nothing. Next. It's the house, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So that's the theatre. Yeah, the house. The house. The house. The house. The house. Are they all called houses? Oh, no, Christchurch is a house at Oxford. Yeah, Oxford. It's just houses. It's just house, yeah. yeah. House. That's all it is, of course it is, it's just house, that's all it is. You didn't even need the last clue, which would have been the casino Love. when betting. The enemy, we might call it. Theatre auditorium you knew. Are you fans of curling? We watch it every four years. <laughs> <laughs> like, like most people, I think. Mm. The target there is called The House, and Christchurch College, Oxford, is known colloquially as The House. So, two points to you. Well done. Wildlifers, what would you like next? Uh, the two reeds, please. The two reeds? What do these clues have in common? Here's the first. Another? Yes. Uh, next, please. Mm. Life in a rice album. What could it be called? Big Baby. Baby. Yeah, yeah. Next, please. Oh, 
Well, that's, that's about, Ted, about Bundy. Ted Bundy, isn't it? No. It's got the um, thing in it, isn't it? Yeah. Should we get the last one? Probably. Uh, last one, please. Just have a scoop. Two seconds. Um, do they all have um, a repeated word in them? So, um, ice, ice, baby, possibly. That's not Absolutely. it. So over to the Apollos for a possible bonus. We think it's tautological names. That's not it. You're closer. It is to do with the words. You can put before all of them extremely. Extremely Dangerous is a TV show. There is a Vanilla Ice album, Extremely Live. You knew, I think, the film about Ted Bundy, yeah. but the title, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. And the reason telescope is repeated twice, it's not tautological, it's because extremely large telescope is a telescope. Or it will be a telescope. It's still under construction. It's going to be in a desert in Chile. Uh, not to be confused with the very large telescope, which is in a desert in Chile. <laughs> so no points there, but Apollos, you may choose your own question. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. What connects these clues? Here's the first. Can you do who he is? No, no, Next. Next. That could be a name of a Mars chocolate bar. Yeah, could be. A bounty or something. Well, any Mars probes which have a special no, name? Next. Like that. Next. That's Capri. So, Capri, so it's it's Bourneville. It's Bourneville. So, so, so it's Bourneville is the village. Then. So chocolate bars. I'll just say it's chocolate bars. Chocolate bars. That's it. They all gave their names to chocolate bars. Which did you recognise? Bourneville. Obviously, the last one is Bourneville. I heard you being very logical, Terry, about that third clue. Well, yeah, I was thinking maybe it's Bounty. It's not Bounty, it's Snickers. Ooh. So, Frank Mars, the chocolate man, and his wife, Ethel, they bred racehorses and they had a favourite horse, Snickers, and they named the bar after that. Sadly, the horse died in 1930, so it never knew about the tribute. <laughs> what a shame. Christopher Catling's group, who were they, do you think? We were stumped by this one. It was the Kit Kat Club. Ooh. Christopher Catling had a pie shop and he made Kit Kat pies, mutton pies, from his name, Christopher Catling, and he ran this club, the Kit Kat Club, in the pie shop and Roundtree took the name for their bar. The 1920s milkshake is, of course... That's right, Milky Way. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, they yeah, all gave course. their name to chocolate bars. Back to you wildlifers, what would you like? Uh, horned Viper, please. OK, what connects these clues? Here's the first. Eyes to the right. Eyes to the right. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, next, please. Red lines. Yeah, so it's lines, isn't it? Yeah, so. Red lines, the right. Uh, should we get one more? Next, please. Nothing. 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 Should we take the last? Uh, next one, please. All between the cracks. Oh, they're all ridiculous. Um, yeah. Dingbats. Uh, we think they're dingbats. And what do you mean by that? Um, so, like, fall between the cracks. The word fall is written in between the and cracks. Nothing Ooh. in between the ears, read between the lines. Yeah. That's exactly it. All of the middle words have been put between other words to make an expression. Right between the eyes, read between the lines, nothing between the ears, fall between the cracks. Clearly, there's not nothing between your ears. Well done. <laughs> and Apollo's the last question of the round for you. That will be the eye of Horus. The music question, what connects these clues? Here's the first. Where do you go when you're love? And the world knows. Next, please. That is... That's a cheeky girl, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Next, please. We have a That's a boy. Twins. 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 They are all being sung by twins. What did we hear? Well, we recognise the cheeky girls and Bross. Don't know the first one. Tegan and Sarah, where does the good go? Did you see the Bross film? Sadly, no. no. I've got it some quotes from it here. The letters H-O-M-E are so important because they personify the word home. 
I like this one. I made a conscious decision because of Stevie Wonder not to be too superstitious. Well, that makes sense. You didn't even need the fourth clue. What do you think we'd have heard at clue four? Jedward. It wouldn't have been Jedward. The Proclaimers. No. Where would this show be without the Proclaimers just havering away, wouldn't we, without those guys? That means at the end of round one, the wildlifers have two points. The Apollos have five. <laughs> Sequence is time, and you'll be going first again. Wildlifers, what would you like? Uh, the water, please. The water. You will remember that you will see a series of clues. I want to know what comes forth, and these are going to be picture clues. So what would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. Oh, it's Manic Street Preachers. I don't know what his name is, the drummer. Oh, anyway. Uh, do I should get the next one? Next, please. Oh, it's pic is it Pixie Lot? Pixie Lot? Yeah. Is that right? Pixie Lot or one could of the Geldofs? Yeah, <laughs> it could be like an identical animal kind of thing. Yeah. Should we take another? Yeah, next, please. Is that a dream? Dream. Yeah, dream. Pixie. Pixie. Echo. No, dreams not echo, is it? <laughs> Should we get the last one? I think so. Next, please. Oh, no, it's what comes next. <laughs> Two seconds. And it is I who will shout next, please, because you have to tell me what it is. Uh, coat. And why would that be? We are thinking it might be some sort of pixie dream coat. <laughs> that sounds like a lovely coat. I wish I had one, but not a sequence I recognise. So a bonus chance for you, Apollos. Elf. Elf would be nice. I mean, let's have a look at the picture. It's sort of elfin, isn't it? But I think I can't give you the point. That's not an elf. It's not an elf. It's a girl. The phrase is Manic Pixie Dream oh. Girl. Have oh. you heard it, Harry, before? I have heard it before, yes. What is a Manic Pixie Dream Girl? Um, it's like a kind of trope in kind of movies. I think it's got a negative connotation that it's a bit simplistic. So I think where I've heard it from is from the movie 500 Days of Summer, I think. <laughs> Exactly that kind of thing, or Garden State with Natalie Portman. Mm -hmm. It was a film critic pointed it out. There's a, you get these sort of female characters that they're kind of airy, fairy, elfin, you know, up in the clouds, but their role is to kind of inspire the male protagonist to discover what's wonderful about life. Mm -hmm. um, even the, uh, Catherine Hepburn, some people say, played this character in, um, in Bringing Up Baby. That even Catherine Hepburn gets into this trap where the only point of your character is for a man to realise something. They don't make good quizzes, Manic Pixie Dream Girls. <laughs> no points there, but you may choose your own question. What would you like? Two reads, please. Two reads. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Okay, so we've got a musical time. It's fast, isn't it? Next other words for those, sir. So. Okay, so oh, we've got two Amazon songs. Yeah, and that's right. Ring, money, ring, money, ring, money, ring, 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 honey, honey. Yeah, it's three words. So it's five. It's like the word, the word, the word, the word. I do, I do. Yeah. yeah. Hang on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, just be I do, won't it? Yeah, what's yeah, four? Yeah. I don't know. I do. And why would that be? Well, we're seeing some ABBA songs there. We're seeing Honey Honey, which is repeated twice. Money, 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 repeated three times. And I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, was also an ABBA song. I refuse to listen to your answer unless you sing it to me. But it just goes, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, 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 do. But that's it. Do. You definitely get the points. Very right. well done. And in fact, in third place, nothing. Because there's nothing that's repeated four times. There's a few songs where they repeat something twice. Money, 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 gimme, 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 it's three. Nothing repeated four times, but I do, I do, I do, I do, I do is five times. Very well done and beautifully sung, if I may say. Back to you, wildlifers, what would you like? Uh, the lion, please. The lion. Let's hope this will be an answer you can sing. <laughs> what will come forth in this sequence is the first. <laughs> next, isn't it? And uh, next, please. Mr. Conrad. Um, Terence Conrad. Jasper Conrad. So, what's Mr Bean's first name? Do I don't know. Shall I get the next one? Mm -hmm. Next, please. Oh, it's Buzz. 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 Oh, so it'll be the people on the moon, maybe? Uh, yeah. Terence. Uh, uh, There's Michael Collins, but I don't know what Bean's first name is. No. Uh, so, who do you think's left? Do you think we're going to leave? I don't think it's left. No, we may not be. Oh, Mr Diamond. Two seconds. Mr Diamond? Not the answer, I'm afraid. What do you think, Apollos? Mr Armstrong. Is the right answer. But do you know why? We have the four, third, second and first men on the moon. That's right. It's people that have walked on the moon backwards. 
I mean, not walked, <laughs> but not in a, Michael in a Michael Jackson style. Yeah. Yeah. It's people that have walked on the moon going backwards. So Alan Bean and going back through time, Pete Conrad, and then to the previous mm. mission, Apollo 11, yeah. Buzz Aldrin, we were thinking and then Neil, Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. But we thought it was like um, just the first names of the people, so then we tried to go for somebody else. <laughs> oh, I see. So you knew it was Neil, yeah. but you were just giving a different, different name. Neil. It was too sophisticated <laughs> for us. Oh, I'm sorry. Very unlucky there. <laughs> But I don't feel as sorry for you as I do for Neil Armstrong with the, with the quote that he messed up. Mm. You, you, you know that they, there's this great thing. I talked about this on a panel show the other day and nobody had heard this, that he was supposed to say, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Poor Neil Armstrong. There's a quote from Neil Armstrong about what he was supposed to say on the moon. This is his quote. For people who've listened to me for hours on the radio communication tapes, they know I left a lot of syllables out. I think that reasonable people will realise I didn't intentionally make an inane <laughs> statement. Certainly the A was intended, because that's the only way the statement makes any sense. So I would hope that history would grant me leeway, even if it wasn't said, although it actually might have been. <laughs> yeah. We could all just club together and pretend that he said one small step for a man. After all, we pretend that they went to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> On with the next question. Apollos, what would you like? Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Oh, yeah. it's the first letter of eight, please. Okay, seven, so... Seven seventh letter of eight. Seventh letter of eight. I've got it. The seventh, oh. the seventh letter of September is, is B. A, the first B. letter of oh, eight so is so one. So one. So you've got a month with a Yeah, so December what? December the first. So December the first. December the first. Without, without... Yeah, so D, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Just check it again. We've got time. Yeah, B, C, D. A, B, C. Yeah. 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 December 1st. Merry Christmas. Another three points for you. The answer is December 1st. And why? So we've got A, B, we've got months with A, B, C and D in. And the number after it is the letter in the, in the word. Exactly the so. Is. The first letter of April is A. The seventh letter of September is B. Fourth letter of March is C. So we were looking for uh, something with a D in it. We've gone for December the 1st. What else could we have gone for? That's right, nothing. nothing. December <laughs> oh. is the only month with a D in it. Wildlifers, what would you like? Uh, twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Is that, is that, is that the golden ratio? Next. Next, please. I think we're going to need another. Uh, next, please. That's one and a third, isn't it? That's yeah. one and a uh, fifth. Yeah. So, so one and a seven. It's just going up. It's going. No, it's, it's, it's going five. Down. It's going, yeah, so it's just one. No, it's two. Two? Is the right answer. <laughs> but do you know why? Harry does. <laughs> So the first is 1 plus 1 over 7, the second is 1 plus 1 over 5, the third is 1 plus 1 over 3, and the, the last one is 1 plus 1 over 1. That's really interesting. You've arrived at that quite intricately. Another way of expressing it is it's 8 sevenths, 6 fifths, 4 thirds, and 2 onths, as it were. Or 8 divided by 7, 6 divided by 5, 4 divided by 3, and 2 divided by 1 arrives at 2. Well done. Last question of the round for you, Apollos, the Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this final sequence? Here's the first. Well, next, next. Yeah. I think there's it's TV Ford regions. Cars, yeah. Yeah. Ford cars. Oh, okay. So, but, Could be like but, but we need more anyway. Yeah, what's, so what's the sequence? I've got no idea. Newest. It's next. Ford, Ford cars. <laughs> No, it isn't. South, oh. South Shields, oh, East well. Anglia, in West Berwick. <laughs> it's South, West Berwick, is it? North and South, no, no. isn't it? Hang on. There's, there's East right. Anglia, there's South Shields. South Shields. Shields. South. So, so it's going to be East, West then, isn't it? South, West. Is it, what's Berwick? Is that North, oh, North East, Berwick, West or South? North Berwick, there is a North so, Berwick. So we want okay. West something. West Hartlepool. Yeah. yeah. Hartlepool. For what reason? Because you've got um, places that proceeded with North, South and East. Exactly so. so. We went with Bromwich, something that can be preceded by West they're definitely Ford cars. No, they're not. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. We're going round the compass and we need somewhere that could be preceded by West. That means at the end of round two, the wildlifers have four points, the Apollos have 14. <laughs> time for the connecting wall now. And Apollos, you'll be going first this time, so please choose lion or water. Lion, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting 
now. Vienna custard cats. Yeah, yeah. Sylvester. Sylvester, yeah. And cat, cat is called cat as well. Jelly yeah. is a cat. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, look, we've got, we've got Monk and Basie and Morton. Yes, yeah. jelly, um, uh, jelly roll. Waller. Ah, right, okay, let's get rid of those. Oh, brilliant. Right. Right. Okay, so we've got cats. Let's jellyfish, get rid of... starfish, swordfish. Oh, yes. Um, oh, like that. Catfish. Yes, yes. Can you see any more? No. no. It might want to hold back. No, let's get let's get rid of them. Right, so there's another fish. Some fish, obviously, yes, there must be. Yes, stars are uh, stars is rats, though. What's the lady thing? Vienna? Yeah, just trying. Right, right. Three okay. lives now. So, so we've got cats, we've got custard, we've got Sylvester, we've got Vienna. Yeah. So what's going on? So, is it a word? Sa is Salem it a word thing? A, yeah. Salem is a word in Stephen King. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, lady fingers, no idea. Ale is in the uh, di diner. This diner could be a cat, though, couldn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Jelly. Is jelly a cat? Lady yeah, fingers. No Lady oh, fingers is a type star, of. Is star. that a flower or a. Cream, uh, cream. I think this is a word somewhere. Yeah, we need our cats. Zest, vest inside your vest, no. Give us enough ale, time to, ale to do the Ale inside Salem. Are there drinks inside there? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Uh, Males. Meals. Yeah. Diner. Right, we need we need to start doing some yeah. cats yeah. here. So I'm going to take the assumption it's jelly, and then I'm going to go lady fingers. Okay. I hope. Two right. lives now. So diner. Okay, seconds. get get the three cats again. So lady fingers. Right. Right. Problem. Mm. What looks most like a cat? Salem. I've got a feeling, yeah, I think it's Salem. It's the witches, witch trolls. Yeah. That's your three lives. The wall has frozen. But you found two groups, and can you tell me the connections? Morton, Monk, and so on? These are famous jazz um, musicians. That's right, they're all jazz pianists. And the next group, Cat, Sun, Star, Sword. You can follow them all with fish. Yes, you can. And you can still get points for the connections in the groups you didn't find. So let's resolve the wall. Here we go. Diner, Vienna, Sylvester, Salem. That's going to be the cats then, isn't it? Yeah. Cats. Those are the cats. Sylvester the cat, of course, in the cartoon. Diner in Alice in Wonderland. Salem from Sabrina wise, the Teenage too. Witch. And who's Vienna? Uh, oh, Rigsby. Rigsby's, Rigsby's. Rigsby's cat yeah. in Rising Damp. And what about the last group? Yeah, they're just like sweet, they're puddingy dessert things. I need to hear something specific. Ice cream. I'm afraid not. There is only one common pudding that has those four things in, and it is a trifle. But you found two groups and you gave me three connections. That is a total of five points. Let's bring in their opponents now, give them the other wall, the water wall, and see how they get on. Wildlifers, you have two and a half minutes to solve your wall, starting now. Clement Utley. There's, there's statues in there, the, the, the pinker, the little mermaid. David. 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 Oh, there's mon monkeys right, as well. Um, Bolo, Donkey Kong. Uh, your first name for Prime Ministers is right. Oh, yeah. Um, but there's quite a few, potentially. Can you see any of the monkeys while I've got those on? Uh, no, shall I do the uh, Winston, Ramsey, Clement, David? There's quite William a few options. Troy, yeah, Theresa, Theresa Margaret. Margaret. So balloon I mean. Dog is a statue as well, isn't it? So do you want to do the Balloon, balloon dog, dog? Thinker, Mermaid. And David, and my kind David. David. Yep. So then, should we try the Prime Minister's? Yeah. Uh, Ramsey, Clement, Margaret, Theresa, Clement, Winston, Ramsey. Leave out. Leave out, Ramsey. Yeah, Clement. Left. Then leave out, Winston. Winston. Yep. Okay. Three lives now. So we've got... got that. So there's monkeys and they're following Donkey Kong. Winston... What? Oh, he could be a monkey, couldn't he? Goose? Nature. Um, mother. Mother nature, mother goose, mother yeah. tongue. Mother goose, mother nature, mother tongue. <laughs> mother Shipton. Like Mother Shipton's cave. Neither one's a... Uh, monkey, monkeys, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. You've solved the war. Very well done. What about the connections? Tell me about the first group, the Little Mermaid, David, and so on. Uh, they're all statues. They are statues and sculptures. Second group, Ramsay, Clement, Teresa, Margaret. 
First names of prime ministers? They are all UK prime ministers. And the next group, Shipton Tongue Nature Goose. You can put mother before all of them. You can put mother before all of them. And the last group, Winston, Bolo and so on. I think they're all gorillas. They are all gorillas. I'm so relieved because I heard you saying monkeys <laughs> and I thought you were going to say monkeys and I'm going to want to take it and I will get such <laughs> hell from the viewers because they are absolutely not monkeys. No, what they are is We've seen them as well. Gorillas, yes, as a team of wildlife. <laughs> gorillas is what they are. Very well done. So that's all four points for the connections. And the bonus, it's the maximum of ten points. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The wildlifers have 14 points. The Apollos have 19 points. The missing vowels round will now determine which of these teams remains in the competition and who goes home. So, fingers on buzzers teams. I can tell you that the first group of disguised clues were all born in Trinidad. Wildlifers. Nicki Minaj. Correct. Tricky one, because it's initials. V.S. Naipaul. Next clue. Apollos. Clarilla Benjamin. Possibly the world's greatest person. Next clue. Wildlifers. Brian Lara. Yes, it is. Next category. Titles that employ the senses. Wildlifers. Scent of a woman. The film. Wildlifers. Taste of honey. Yes, it is. Apollos. Miss Smiller's feeling for snow. Correct. Wildlifers. Sound of silence. Not it, I'm afraid. Apollos, do you sounds know? Sounds of silence. I'm afraid it sounds you missed an S. Next category, assistance. Wildlifers. Miss Moneypenny. Yes, it is. Apollos. Waylon Smithers. Correct. Apollos. Siri. That's right. Wildlifers. Cretin? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I am going to make an executive decision. I was looking for Cortana, Microsoft's intelligent assistant, but there are many people who have been assisted by people they consider to be cretins, so I'm going to give you the point. Cretin is an acceptable answer. And that means, looking at the final scores, the wildlife has finished with 19 points, but through to the next round with 24. It's the Apollos. Very well done, Apollos. We look forward to seeing you later in the competition. Wildlifers, I'm sorry it was a great last round for you. Harry, you were on fire, unlucky with the sounds of silence. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for playing. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I imagine the internet is already giving its verdict. Let's have a look. Oh. Well, bad means good now, right? Doesn't it? That... Well, and that's probably auto-corrected from clap. <laughs> good night. <laughs>